Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell and welcome to my favorite games from my favorite designers. And um, so today we're talking about Bruno Catala. Now I know here in the Dice Tower, our resident expert Z Garcia, who Bruno Catala is his favorite, if not well, one of his favorites, if not his favorite designer. But you know what? That doesn't mean the rest of us don't like a lot of games from Bruno Catala too. And I went and looked at the number of games I rated from him and he is quite prolific to the point where someday we may be able to do a top 100 games from him. He's also a very nice person, exceptionally humble and just fun to play games with. Uh, but I just want to go through my top 10 games from him. So here we go. Number 10 is Micropolis. Now this is a theme I like a lot, although the theme is barely here as you are building an ant colony. Essentially this is a drafting game where you're drafting tiles and building them kind of in a ring around this and building this little ant colony with the little tokens and stuff, ants on it. And you score points for connecting different tunnels, for having army ants and things like that. And you know what? It's, it's fun. There's something about it. This com you're going to complete the ant colony, but you're trying to complete it better than everyone else is completing theirs and score points in different ways. And I like it. That's why it's my number 10. Number nine is a two-player game, which was told to me for a long time by others at the Dice Tower Studio to play it, and I finally did and really enjoyed it, and that's Raptor. Raptor's a game which, uh, some people talk about re-theming it, but I really like the theming. It's a mother raptor trying to keep her baby raptors from being gotten by a bunch of evil scientists. I'm assuming they're evil. Um, the scientists are trying to capture them, and the mother raptor is taking the scientists out. But it's done by a very simple card mechanism where you're both playing a card, revealing it, and only one card is going to go off. And it's, it, it's a kind of a war-esque, you know, the game of war, uh, but modified. And then a board that you then take the results of the actions on them. Very neat concept. And I like the theme. My number eight is Longhorn. So a lot of people love Five Tribes from Bruno Catala. Just a spoiler alert, not on my list. I don't like it as much as everyone else. I don't hate the game, but I just don't love it as much as everybody else. But Longhorns for me feels a lot like what I want Five Tribes to be. It has a lot of the same decisions, although I think it's just a two-player game, but in a much smaller setting and you're wrestling cattle, which is not a particularly interesting theme, or not wrestling cattle, herding cattle, whatever it might be, but I still like the Western motif to it and think it's a fun, interesting game. Number eight is Abyss. Abyss made the headlines when it first came out because it had five different covers, uh, something they quickly stopped and went down to just the one cover that you see here. Um, but Abyss itself has a bunch of mechanisms, a really beautiful, gorgeous world of undersea creatures and stuff, and um, pearls, you know, little pearls as a currency. All that stuff is neat, but the game itself is kind of a push-your-luck element to it as you're putting out cards, you decide to stop at any point, you're getting keys, you're getting, you know, you're just trying to score points, you're matching stuff, but it comes together in a really nice way that I enjoy. My number six is the newest game on this list, and that's Splendor Duo. Splendor is a very solid game that I enjoy. Bruno Catalo, though, shows himself to be the master of taking one of these games and making it a fantastic two-player game. Splendor Duo, uh, it's better than Splendor. I like the idea of collecting the chips and using them to go back and forth with your opponent. Um, it feels very head-to-head. -head. Um, the, it, it changes enough rules about Splendor, but still keeps the basic principles to be the same that I just found it to be a joy to play. Number five is Dice Town. Dice Town is a fantastic game of rolling dice and, that, and making poker hands from them. And it's really fun. You roll dice each turn, you look at the dice you rolled, and that's your poker hand. But you only get to keep one of the dice and to build your poker hand. But you can pay a dollar to keep more or pay a dollar to keep none of them. You then use those dice to rob banks, to, to mine for gold, to build out different areas. Now, uh, Dice Town has a couple expansions, and I think the game itself is very good. But with one or both of its expansions, it's even better, uh, but a lot of fun. Number four is a co-design, as many of his games are, Shadows Over Camelot. Shadows Over Camelot, of course, the game that kind of put the idea of having a traitor in a cooperative game on the map. Battlestar Galactica took it home. But Shadows Over Camelot first from Days of Wonder, what a fantastic game where you're the king of, you're the knights of the round table when King Arthur, and you're trying to stop the forces of evil. And this is the game that kind of taught us to, hey, something bad happens, then you do something good. Then something bad happens, you do something good. A lot of other cooperative games follow it. This one did so very well and handles up to seven players in a very fun way. 
Number three is Cyclades. Now, Cyclades is a game that when I first played, I thought, ah, it's pretty good, but it got better. And when you add in the Titans expansion, it is absolutely amazing. This is a game in which you are different Greek factions trying to control different cities, metropolis, metropolises, metropolis. I don't know how, what the plural of metropolis is. Um, but you're trying to control them and you get to use these big giant mythological creatures to help you out along the way. And it has a really good auction mechanism. It's like that perfect cross. You like Euro auction games. You like a little bit of dudes on a map with big creatures games. They all combine together to make a very fun game. Number two is Mission Red Planet. This one has grown for me over the years. It's been out for a long time now. But the uh, concept of this game where you're playing a card and, uh, I mean, again, it's another co-design he said, but you play the card and the card gives you some sort of action and the number order of the actions. But meanwhile, you're packing up these different spacemen on these ships, sending them off to Mars for an area control game there. Very interactive and handles a large count of players better than you might think. Most games don't handle six very well. This doesn't do bad, but I also like it at lower player counts. Very good game, Mission Red Planet. And my number one game from Bruno Catalo, another one where he took someone else's design and made the dual version of it, and that's Seven Wonders Duel, which is widely acknowledged critically to be better than Seven Wonders. Seven Wonders is a great drafting game. Don't want to take anything away from that. But Seven Wonders Duel brings it as a two-player game, changes it up and makes it feel like a really good head-to-head -head match, and it also makes drafting as a two-player game with the cards on the table just a brilliant design choice and a lot of fun. So those are my favorite Bruno Catala games, but I'm sure I missed your favorite, probably Five Tribes. But maybe it's something else. Let me know in the comments. But until next time, I'm Tom Bassel, and these are my favorite games for my favorite designers.